actually dr rajiv raman supposed to come but his father was not well so he has sent his slides and i will be sharing these slides the gist of the slides i will tell you so that we will not miss the subject matter of this talk so uh, the two components are there one is diabetic macular edema second is proliferative diabetic retinopathy if you see the diabetic macular edema you should be like a eagle diabetic macular edema how to manage and first of all you classify whether it is uh, what type of diabetic mac maculopathy you are dealing with we have told you several types in my talk so here it is mainly the edema part whether it is center involving or center sparing center space sparing the management is different then the systemic uh, parameters should always be assessed as a general ophthalmologist as a, uh, or as a retina specialist. And then you consider which injectables or the laser which are uh, mainly you give as a treatment. So once you decided that anti-age of injections, then you need to see what type of uh, diabetic macular edema, whether it is a good response or not good response, what is the vision the patient is having, and what are the OCT findings. So this is very, very important, and uh, when there is an obvious traction, the answer is vitrectomy, not any injections or the systemic parameters. Now, if you have ruled out other ischemic and traction, then you should assess your for injections, then you should assess that what is the vision. In this, if the vision is 2025 or better, it was told that observation is better than even committing for injections. This one need to very well understand. The second is when the vision is less than 2030, then you need to identify the diabetic macular edema, which type of the patient we are dealing with, which is good responder, intermediate responder or non-responder. And depending upon that, you need to select the anti-VEGF agents. Then if you see the other uh, factors, here CVA, the cardiovascular uh, accidents and cerebrovascular accidents and then cardiac also then probably you may have to avoid anti vgf and go for steroids. DMA during pregnancy, again, each trimester has its impact on the management of diabetic macular edema. Early, probably you may have more uh, laser and uh, the injections may be, but with the caution, not anti vgf steroids can be given. Late pregnancy, certain times, it's better to wait for treatment once the delivery probably it may improve by itself then comes is the poor compliance which is very very dangerous when you are committing for injections so you should always ensure that good follow-up is required and if you see the ckd which uh, the question uh, nilatal has asked in these cases when anti is probably you may have to suspend it temporarily or if it is not possible, commit for steroids in these cases. Then eye related, it can be either uh, vitectomized eyes, then again the absorption of anti will be very fast, so it's go for a long acting and implants are better in these cases. Then DME with PDR, definitely it was anti which you can opt for. And pseudophagic eyes always, you should identify CME or DME. This identification should be done before you commit for the management. So now uh, comes is the disease related factors, especially uh, uh, Dr. Vishali has uh, very briefly touched upon the plaque hard exudates in the macular area when you are seeing this, certain times lasers can be detrimental in these cases. So you should uh, go for one dyslipidemics or intravital steroids and then maybe adjuvant lipid lowering agents in these cases. And when uh, there is a poor vision and thicker retina, then injections. 
Traction is there, surgery is the answer for these cases. Then different management strategies and studies are available, but uh, the newer agents like brolicizumab and forcimab can uh, clarify to an extent because these are long-acting anti vsf agents which may help in um, diabetic macular edema management. Then the second component of uh, the presentation is the proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Again, the, we always think that proliferative has a clear answer but not so in all uh, cases. And especially when you, you see the long-term outcomes, it's very tricky. You can see in over 19 years, these patients, almost half of them are retaining good vision, like 40% with 2020 or better vision, and 84% uh, almost retaining 2040. Means it is not so urgent in the management of proliferative diabetic retinopathy in diabetics. And the vision loss also in uh, different studies, it has shown uh, different thing, but more uh, you should be concentrating on not only laser, but the cataract component. You can see the uh, extent of cataract surgery is almost 50% of the patients are having that. And VR surgery also, almost quarter of the patients requiring VR surgery in proliferative diabetic retinopathies. So, in PDR, laser or injections, what is the benefits of each modality, whether better anatomical outcome which is coming with it, this modality or a better functional outcome or a less adverse effects with each modality or less uh, complications or more economical. These components, if you see from laser to injections, what is the studies are saying? These are not shown great advantage to injections compared to lasers in proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So we should tend for more no for injections in proliferative diabetic retinopathy where there is a limited role for anti -vagers. Whereas diabetic macular edema is totally different scenario where if you really, uh, rule out the ischemia and traction, the injections may play a major role and a focal diabetic macular edema can be treated with laser. So uh, there are uh, some supportive studies but main important when you are committing for an anti vgfs is uh, that uh, your uh, follow up should be very good. And what happens if you have given anti vgf and this patient is lost to follow up, again a dangerous outcome which can be a, uh, in terms of poor visual outcome or in terms of worsening of the disease process which is very very dangerous one should be very careful and in very rare cases there can be a nevascular glaucoma means the vision is lost forever in these cases. Thank you Rajiv for this presentation. I would not thank myself because the whole uh, subject and the knowledge is from Dr. Rajiv Raman and I wish his father recovers very